Amen. Amen. How many people know the peace of the Lord this morning? Amen. All right, five of you got the peace of the Lord this morning. I want you all to think about something. You all came into this place today expecting something, and I pray you get everything you were expecting. I pray that everything you anticipated, you leave with today. But more than anything that I hope you leave with is peace. The peace that only God can give. And you may say to yourself, is it possible to actually have peace? 100% peace. Is it possible to have peace with God? Yes. Is it possible to have peace with self? And is it possible to have peace with others? We've got to understand that when we embrace and we put on the truth of God and the righteousness of God, we will give the unconditional love of God. And that's how we give the grace of God as we receive it. And so as we talk about peace today, I want you to know that you can have peace. And you can know how to make peace. But you need to know that this message builds on everything we've been talking about when we talk about healing. Remember, we decided to get real about our brokenness. We decided to get real, to get healed. We've gotten our story straight about God, about ourselves, and about our pain. And having surrendered our need to be in control to the Holy Spirit, and having been cleansed by the forgiveness of God, and we've exchanged our unhealthy habits for healthy habits. We put on what Christ freely gives. And that's how we can live at peace. We can live at peace with God, and that's through our relationship with Him through Jesus Christ alone and the power of the Holy Spirit. You can have that peace with God, and there's only one way to do that. That is Jesus Christ. You can have peace with yourself because if you will accept the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, and the salvation that only comes from God, you can allow that healing to work in your life. You can also have peace with others as you learn to make peace with other people. That's one of the hardest things in the world to do, isn't it? We can have peace, we just don't want to make peace. Understand, you'll never be at peace until you're willing to make peace. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says this. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. If they will know we are Christians by our love, they should know we are Christians secondly by what? Being peacemakers. How can you live at peace with God and others and yourself? There's a couple of steps that I want to hit on today, and that's it. You've got to learn to receive the peace of God. You've got to learn to receive that. Did you know you can't give away what you don't have? Did you know that you can't pour into others what you're not full of yourself? Can I just say, I would love to give every one of you all a check for a million dollars. But the truth is, no matter how bad I want to, I don't have that kind of money. And I can write you the check, but you can never what? You can never cash it. I can't give you what I don't have. And so when we talk about the peace of God, I must first have the peace of God before I can what? Give it to you and share it with you. And so a lot of times what we've done is we've got caught up in this habit of wondering why this isn't working. It's because you're trying to give away something you don't have. Something that's not in you. Something that's not a part of you. And if you're not at peace, then you can't teach others about peace. I shared a conversation this morning uh, with a gentleman in this church. And I said, you know what? I know what you're going through. And, and I know what you're going through so much that I had something similar to me happen. And here's what happened. And I want you to know, it only took me 45 years to learn how to do that. I'm only 46. Some of y'all need to understand that you may not get it right off the bat, but I can't give you something that I don't have. I can't teach you something that I'm not practicing. I can't share with you something that's not in my ability to give. And if you're here today and you're wanting peace, you can receive it from God Almighty. But you need to be ready to give it. God gives us nothing that we cannot share with other people. Amen? Amen? I want you to have peace. I want you to be at peace. And Jesus is that ultimate example. Ultimate example of what peacemaking looks like. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I'll be reading from verses 14 through verse 16. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. It says, For He Himself is our peace. Talking about Jesus. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in His flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create Himself 
one new man from two, thus making peace, that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Jesus Christ is not only our model of peace, He is the reason we have peace. In the Old Testament, there was laws that they laid down in Leviticus of how they should be this nation and what they should and should not do. And most of us know the Ten Commandments and we have trouble keeping ten. But all together, if you count up all the laws, there was about 616. And when you add the Ten Commandments to it, that makes it 626. I don't know about you, but I can't even get my list of things I need to get done for today all accomplished, let alone be able to practice in a way that I can keep that many laws. Part of the thing that is a stumbling block for people is they feel like in order to be part of the body of Christ, in order to receive salvation, that it's this big list of do's and don'ts. That's not true. There is one thing that stands before you and God, and that is the mediator, Jesus Christ. And if you go through Jesus, you will be found righteous in the eyes of God. And there's peace in knowing that today. Now understand, when we live a life for Christ and have the peace that God gives us, we should act a certain way. We should live a certain way. We should abide in the love and the law of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, if you're my disciple, then you what? Do what I say. Live how I live. And that is our example. So if we're not living like Jesus, if we're not more like Jesus and less like us, like we sung about, then we really don't truly follow Him. We just want to be associated with Him. We just want to be a known associate of Christ. But the powerful work that Jesus done in reconciling lost and fallen man, sinful men and women, back to the Father is miraculous. And that is how we attain peace. There was nothing we could do on our own. I like how it said that we are an enmity with God. And I'm all about definitions. Enmity is one of those words you say it and you read it in Scripture and you're like, I wonder what that means. So I looked it up and it said the state of feeling or being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. Let me repeat that. Enmity. The state of feeling or being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. It says that God in one body through the cross, through the cross put to death that enmity. If you're here today and you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, whether you know it or not, you are at war with God. You are at war with God. You're an enmity of God. You either feel like He is not who He says He is or you don't believe in Him or you oppose what He stands for and everything that He's given us or you are hostile towards Him because when you go against God, you will lose. I'm thankful for the peace that I find in Jesus Christ that gets me beyond the enmity. I'm no longer hostile towards Christ. I am reconciled through Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm a son of the King. Are you a son of the King? Are you a daughter of the King? I promise you there's more power in that crown that was won on Crowley in the empty tomb than you will ever see glorified in this world. There are things to come you can't fathom yet. And I know that I'm a part of it. And that's where my peace lies. Amen. Jesus offered us that peace. We could never earn it. And we could never create it. It is given from Him. A lot of times, we don't catch what God's given because we ain't out with our hands expecting to receive it. One of my favorite things to do is to throw stuff at my child when he does not realize I'm going to throw it at him. If I'd have let him know, he might have caught it. Probably not. God's not going to throw anything to you if you're not willing to catch it. Because you'll never keep it. Some of you are praying for a reconciliation today. A change in your life. But you don't want to do what it takes to make the change. Some of you want peace. But you're not willing to give up the things that are causing you discord. You're not willing to let go of the things that are causing you chaos. If anything over the past two years that transpired that showed me anything was this. I can have peace in any and all situations, no matter what, come what may. Because my peace is not based on who or what I am. But it's based on whose I am and God gives me peace that the world can't give my wife can't give my kids can't give my family can't give the church can't give it comes from him and the peace that is in me I pray that it radiate and it radiate out into you that you know no matter what happens come what may I stand on the rock of Jesus Christ and I will not be shaken turn with me to Romans Romans chapter 5 for those of you all know me know that I love the book of Romans I hope that you will follow in the book of Romans as well. 
fall in love with it because there's so much in Romans that answers so many things that if you're going to remember Scripture and quote Scripture, Romans is a good book to be in. It's 16 chapters long. It's about eight, ch eight chapters of how we're all wrong and about eight chapters of how God sets us free and makes us right. I love a good story with a happy ending. So don't worry if you're just in the first few chapters of Roman and it seems bleak and dark. The final eight are great. Amen? Right. All right, Romans 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Lord. It said that we had been justified, justified by our faith. There's not an act that we perform. There's not a religious ceremony that we perform that gives us faith. Faith is a gift of God. He gives it freely to those who are willing to believe. He strengthens that faith. And so we have been justified by it. And it says that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are at peace with God. We are no longer at war. Has anybody ever been in an argument with your spouse? Anybody ever been in an argument with your family member? Maybe a best friend, maybe a coworker. And I, and I don't mean that argument where you're trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong. I'm talking about that kind of argument where you're so angry, you walk, you walk away and you're just mad. You're mad for a long period of time and you don't want to make up. You'd rather break up. You don't want anything bad to happen, but if the Lord smited them, you'd be okay with it. I know about that kind of argument. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. And what I need you to understand here today, that there's two types of people in this world and there's only two. I'm not talking about man and woman, male and female. I'm talking about those who are saved and those who are not. And if you are saved, you are at peace with God through Jesus Christ. Through faith alone, you are justified. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you have not been saved, sanctified, and set free by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are at war with God and you will not know peace, not just on this earth, but for the rest of eternity. That's a bold statement, but it is a true statement. And so many times the church will walk around that. Do you know why things aren't right in your life? Because you don't have the peace of God. No, I did not mean that life is sunshine and roses and rainbows and unicorns just because you believe. But it prepares you that no matter what happens in your life, high, low, in between, you will be at peace because you know God is sovereign and always in control. And whatever you see as negative or bad, God will use it to glorify His name. He will use it to draw people to Him. He will use it to save people. He will draw families together that were broken apart. And just because you've experienced anger and wrath doesn't mean you want to experience the anger and wrath of God. Jesus is what sets us free from that and He puts us at peace. And the peace that Jesus gives is the one that passes all understanding. When we say that, guess what? That means we can't fathom that type of peace. You'll never bring up a situation or a circumstance that will ever trump the peace of God. Amen. What causes followers of Christ as apostles to become martyrs, to be put to death? Not just the twelve, but all those who stood up for the name of Jesus Christ when society told them, no. Those who were burned at the stake put to death, beheaded, sawn in two, and crucified upside down. They went knowing that what? I have peace. No matter what you do to this body, I am at peace with the Creator. And I will be reunited with Him. And when I am reunited with Him, my peace will be magnified because His name will be glorified. Because it wasn't about me. It was about He who called me and He who sent me. Brothers and sisters, that is peace. To walk to your death knowing that the name of Christ was worth more than your name ever was. Amen. And it takes a while to get there. How about we learn to make peace? You'll never have peace until you learn to make it. Now, before we get into this, I want you to understand what peace is not, okay? Peace is not about absorbing abuse from people, okay? Some of y'all are in friendships and relationships that is just downright, downright abusive. Uh, you can even be in a marriage that's abusive, and you're just trying to keep the peace. Now, I, I'm not being sexist here, but I will say I've heard more women tell me when I ask them why they're in their situation, they say, I just want to keep the peace. I, I'm just trying to keep the peace. I, I, I just don't want to anger him. 
Everybody's situation is different, but I want, I want to share something with you today, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Absorbing abuse is not making peace. You are becoming damaged because you refuse to let go of the hand who is holding you down. If you're underwater and that hand is on you, do you want it to keep holding you down? Or do you want to let go and get new breath? People can't save you. A person can't save you. A situation can't save you. Your kids can't save you. Only God can save you. Absorbing abuse is not being a peacemaker. It's going from being a welcome mat to a doormat. And people say, what's the difference? A welcome mat says, come on in. A doormat, people will wipe their feet on you all day and not think twice about it. Quit letting people walk on you. It's okay to have healthy boundaries. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say, you know what? The way you say this and when you talk to me, it makes me feel this way. Now, that may not have been my intention, but if I make you feel that way, guess what that makes me? Guilty of that. I learned that in counseling, guys. You may have never been there before. I've been there several times. Right now, they're so booked up, I can't even get back in. But my wife would tell me that when she would say, you make me feel, I was like, that's not what I meant. It doesn't matter what you mean. If it makes me feel this way, guess what? It's real. To absorb that and act like it's no big deal is wrong. Healthy boundaries. I don't care if you're married or not. Healthy boundaries are everything. Peacemaking is not absorbing abuse. You know what else it's not? Enabling sin. I want to tell you something. I can't talk about nobody else but myself. But I do want to share this with you. Men and women, if you're here today, sometimes since some of us actively participate in the same sin, we'll encourage one another in it. You know why? Misery loves company, right? And, and if we're going to do it, we'd rather do it with somebody else and not alone, right? I don't know. I've never called up myself and said, hey, you want to go out and have a good time? I mean, I know I'm going. But we try to take somebody else with us. We've got to get somebody to actively participate. But what I mean by enabling sin is this. If we don't call things what they are and try to give them another name, it's not going to change it. For those of you who have kids, there's one right there. She's beautiful, isn't she? She's beautiful. She's almost as beautiful as me. She's beautiful. And as beautiful as she is, at some point today, there will be an omission from that body. And somebody got to change it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, sure, I'll change it. You can't tell me that that's roses. It ain't. There's a joy in being a parent. But you know what? There's a lot of pain and hardship that come with it. And you've got to stop calling garbage holy. And you've got to stop calling wrong right. And you've got to stop calling sin anything other than it is. Sin is sin is sin. And when you actively participate in sin, it will not only destroy you, it will put you back at war with God, the very person whom Jesus Christ put you at peace with. If you're here today and you don't have that peace of mind, chances are you're still at war with God because you're not calling sin what it is. What about overlooking error? One of the biggest and greatest things you can do to get peace is apologize. It's hard. I don't know anybody in this room that likes to apologize. The reason why I say that, <laughs> oh, that was cold, I mean, it's cold. I saw that. Ruth even moved down two chairs. You see that? Nobody likes to apologize. And I know people in this room who don't because I'm still waiting on apologies from every one of them. But I'm not going to get this kid. We hate saying we're wrong. We hate saying we're sorry. But did you realize sometimes we become the hindrance to our own peace by holding on to things that we should never keep a hold of in the first place? We hold grudges. Somebody's done us wrong and they may have changed and it might have been 15 years ago, but we still see them as the same. Good thing God doesn't see me who I was 15 years ago. He sees me who I am today and that's born again in Jesus Christ. And I pray tomorrow, God will it, that I'll get up and repeat that process of confession, repentance, and what? Receiving what God can give through grace. Apologize. I'm going to go a step further. I don't care if you're right or wrong. Apologize anyway. I've got further in relationship in my life and friendships by saying I apologize than ever have I had demanding to let them know that I was right. Some of you are here today and you're at odds with family members and you don't have to be. Life's too short to be at odds. I'd rather be in unity. So whether you did it or not, just apologize and walk in the grace of God so you can freely give it. Give peace so that you can get it. Let me tell you what peacemaking does look like. 
It's giving up the need to compete. There are some people in this room and in this world that we know, they compete with everything and about everything. And I've come to understand I'm never going to be able to keep up with the Joneses. I can't even keep up with myself. You don't have to compete. The race has already been run. The victory has already been won. There's nothing you're going to do in your life personally that adds to the cross. If you're born again, Bible-believing, blood bought son or daughter of the King, you have value in Jesus Christ alone, and you don't have to compete with anybody. Anybody. Stop judging who you are by measuring yourself by somebody else's yardstick. Let God measure you by His Son, Jesus Christ. And I promise you, He will give you more than enough grace and mercy to get through. You've got to stop living and start living with nothing to prove. Some people just got a chip on their shoulder. They've got to one-up. They've got to be the boss. They've got to be in control. They've got to get a promotion. They've got to get a raise. Trust me, if you will do every job, everything that you do as if you were laboring for the Lord, there will be glory found in it. You'll find glory sitting behind a desk and never having a window doing this work, putting in data entry. But you'll find glory in sweeping with a broom, mopping a floor, scrubbing a toilet, being on a job site, laying steel. You'll find glory in all things if you'll just do it as if you were doing it unto the Lord and be thankful for what you have. I was reminded, I was telling my wife this week, they get on to Baptist preachers all the time because we refer to our family. All I can tell you is the truth. But I said something to Liz this week, I said, I'm tired. Has anybody in this room ever been tired before? <laughs> All right, well, I was tired. And when I'm tired, I don't know if you all know this, there's two times a male will let you know something's wrong with him. When he's tired and when he's sick. When we are sick and we get cold, we are near death. It doesn't compare to. It says that when women give childbirth, they may quite know that what it's like for a man to be sick. But, <laughs> but I was tired, and all I said to him, listen, I said, I'm tired. And she's like, I understand you're tired. You don't have to tell me that every day. I'm pretty sure it's not changed from yesterday, five years ago, eight years ago. She said, I've got news for you. I'm tired too. And so I say, you know, how we go, y'all ping pong like this, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I said, I have two jobs and it's wearing me out. She goes, I am so sorry. She goes, I just want you to know. She said, for 16 years, I had two jobs too. In my mind, this is what I heard. When I try to tell you, you don't understand, no, I'm tired. Guess what? We all get tired, don't we, brothers and sisters? We don't need to compete. We don't need to compare. You know what we need? We need to thank Jesus. We're still breathing, Amen. still alive. Amen. We need to do everything to the glory of God. I don't care if you're sweeping at your own house. I don't care if you're the person running the vacuum, you got in the headphones. Give glory to God, you've got a vacuum and a floor to vacuum. Maybe you didn't sleep well. Guess what? There was people who didn't sleep at all. Maybe you didn't sleep well because your pillow wasn't fluffed up. I don't want to hear it. And so the encouragement came from stop complaining and stop being gracious. And be to the point to where you say, you know what? I'm at peace with this. God will give me strength to get me through whatever I need. What about this? Giving grace instead of getting even. I don't know if y'all know this, know this or not, but this is one of my favorite things. I love to get even. I mean, I did. Not after this sermon. I mean, I did. I've changed now. I'm born again. I, I would never try to get even with anybody after this sermon. But it was just pre this sermon, so it's in the past. But I believe that some of y'all are in this room today that there's some things that have happened to you that you've not only not let go of, you're trying to get revenge for. And I want you to know that revenge is never listed as a fruit of the Spirit. Stop trying to get even. The Bible tells me that God will fight my battles. God will not only fight my battles, He will be the one that avenges them. And as long as I stand for Him, He will make my enemies my footstool. I don't have to worry about competing with anybody or keeping up with them. I need to forgive them. I need to make peace with them. And I need to be at peace about it. Because God is in control. How about respecting truth while showing unconditional love? You know, sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. And when you share it, make sure you share it in love because that's the way it's received. I can't come up to you and say, you know what's wrong with you? Y'all ever had somebody do that? I can tell you what's wrong with your life. Don't ever. Even if you think you know and even if you think you've walked a mile in that shoes, everybody's different. And the last thing somebody needs is for you to pile more weight on the burden they're already carrying. What you can do is this though. I don't know everything you're going through, but I want you to know that I'm here for you. I used to be that way. I've got the peace of God. If there's anything I can do to help carry yours, 
let me help carry you. Because I'm here to bear your burden with you. But you know what? Let's take it to Jesus in prayer. And let's focus on how to make it right. Let's be honest with people. We can't hold the hand of sin and walk with the hand of Jesus. We've got to let go of one or the other. And the reward of walking with Jesus will always be peace no matter what. And the reward of walking with sin, the Bible tells us, is death. I want the eternity that only God can give. And I want the peace that comes with that eternal life, no matter what. Bringing peace of Jesus to the world around you. Did you know sharing the gospel is one of the greatest ways to have peace? There are days in my life that I wanted to hang my head. And there's days in my life that I wanted to cry and be shameful. But I'm so thankful to God that I have more days that I raise my head because of His grace and His peace than I do because of my own sinful life. How about you? Sharing the Gospel brings peace because the Gospel is the only thing that can give us peace. It tells us and warns us about the wrath of God and teaches us the love of God. It shows us His grace, His mercy, His unconditional love, and more importantly, it shows us His forgiveness. Now back to earlier when you were talking about having them fights with your spouse and your friends and your family, what was one of the greatest things that ever happened because of it? Making up, forgiving, embracing, being united again. There's nothing greater than being united with the Maker the Creator of heaven and earth. Because you know what? That's what you were made for. He made you. He breathed life into you. You were created to worship Him. And when you are in right standing with God, all is at peace. All is at rest. He is glorified. He is magnified. And people see that. And guess what comes from that? Salvation. People want what you have. And it's not what you created. It's what God gave you. And that's the peace that passes all understanding. Do you know that some people will never receive your attempts at peace? You realize that just because you went to make peace doesn't mean they're going to receive your peace, right? I need you to be at peace about that. You see what I did there? I need you to be at peace about that. Just because you're trying to right a wrong doesn't mean people will let you do it. That's where those healthy boundaries come in. Apologize. Do what you can. If they don't accept it, guess what? The Bible says dust off your feet and move on. You've done everything you could. You're never going to please everybody. And you're not here to please everybody. You're here to please one somebody. And His name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. So make amends with people. If they don't accept it, that's their problem. If they slam the door, go on. Forgive them and move on. And no matter how unpeaceful things get here, we know that Jesus is the King of Peace. And He'll absolutely bring perfect peace to His family. Are you part of the family? I'm part of the family. I'm that one cousin or uncle that nobody likes to talk about, but I'm still in the family. Turn with me to Isaiah 9. We're going to finish up today. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Jesus came for one reason, to redeem fallen men and women, to Father God. Do you understand? He reconciles us. His name even speaks it. He is wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father. If you've got a pen underlined it, it says Prince of Peace. He rules all peace. He can freely give it if you're ready to receive it. It says of the increase of His government and peace, there'll be what? No end. It is as big as the ocean. It is deep. You can't run out of it. It's like grains of sand. You can't count it. You can't exhaust it. There's more peace in Jesus Christ than you'll ever find in the world. You can doubt it. You can waste it. But I tell you what, you'll never use it all up. And lastly, it says from that time forward, even forever. Understand. What God has set out to do, He will bring to pass. Have no doubt. Find peace that God told us in His Word from beginning to end how it will all play out. Don't be taken aback. Don't be shocked. Don't be taken by surprise. God's got this. And be at peace about it. If you're at peace with God, that means you know Him as your Lord and Savior. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray today be the day of salvation. You say, Pastor, why did I do that? Well, the Bible tells me that every tongue who confesses with their mouth and believes in their heart that Jesus Christ is Lord shall be saved. Amen? Amen. You must believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. 
You must believe that He lived a sin-free life on this earth for over 33 years. You must believe that He died on the cross for our sins. Notice I said He didn't die for your sins and not my sins. He died for our sins. Amen? Amen. You've got to believe that He not only died on the cross and His sin was perfect atonement for our, or His blood was perfect atonement for our sins, but that three days later He rose from the grave. Yes. And after 40 days and showing Himself to over 500 people, He arose and ascended into heaven. And He said, one day I will return. And we believe that not only He's coming back, we believe this time He's coming back as King Jesus and He will set things straight. Amen? Amen. That is faith through justification through Jesus Christ. And you get that. And once that starts, you have peace in your life. You're forgiven for all your sins when you confess them and repent of them. Just keep in mind, repent means to change. We can't ask for forgiveness of something we're going to keep on doing. We're going to mess up. We're going to fail. We're going to fall. We're not perfect. But I believe in a perfect Heavenly Father who will set the record straight. If you're here today and you don't know peace, I invite you to come know Jesus. Because Jesus is peace. If you're here today and you've already got that peace that passes all understanding, I encourage you to share it. How's that? By reaching out, by speaking out, by living out. Do you remember when you were saved? If you're in this room today, do you remember the day and time that you were saved? Do you remember that feeling that you received? That forgiveness, that power of the Holy Spirit, that's something to talk about, amen? That's something to share. That's something to live. And sometimes it's not that our lights have been put out. It's that it's been halted to a low glow. If you're here today and you had a low glow, I pray you repent and confess that God would fan back into flame what He has begun in you. Because there's a world out there that needs to see your light shine and who it shines for. And there's peace in knowing who you shine for. Amen? Amen. So there's two types of people left today. Those who are at peace. Those who are at war. I pray to be the day, day be the day that you come to peace in Jesus Christ. I pray today be the day that you ask for forgiveness even if you weren't wrong. I pray today be the day you make amends of people you're holding grudges with. I pray, I pray today be the day that you love more and revenge less. Let's stop raising hands in accusation and let's start raising hands in praise. Let's start bowing heads in prayer rather than turning up nose in prejudice. And above all, I pray you have peace even when it feels like your whole world's falling apart. Because Jesus is the anchor that holds no matter the storms that come. Come what may, come what may. He's still on the throne. He's still not shot. And he's still not moved. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. And I pray that he be the Lord of your life. Peace unto you. Not as the world gives, but peace only that I can give. I pray that peace on all of you today. Let's pray. Father, I, I do pray for peace. I pray for understanding. I pray for forgiveness. I pray for mercy. I pray that burdens be lifted. I pray that grudges be broken. I pray that sin be confessed and repented. I pray that change happen in the way that only you can make it happen. Through you, through your blood that was shed, through the gift of salvation, I pray faith increase over your people. I pray their lights shine for you, that so before men they would see that light shine and praise your holy name. Lord, I pray for those who are heavy hearted today, that they receive the peace that only you can give. Lord, today, you know what's in their hearts, what's in their minds, what's in their lives, what they're coming out of, what they're in right now, and what they're getting ready to go to. Prepare them, Lord. Give them peace. The one that called the wind and waves is still in the business of doing it today. And you simply looked at the storm and said, Peace be still. God, whatever you were, you still are today. You still have the same power. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Lord, today and this time, let me focus on you. The sinner and the saved. The lost and the found. May we come to know peace like we never had before. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.